The young and the restless heirs today, Tucker and Adam strike up a conversation, Daniel receives some good news, and Sally takes a crucial phone call. Sally sits on the bed in her suite and asks Nick what he's been thinking since since she told him that Adam might be the father of her kid. He was waiting to see who would initiate the conversation. Nick had come to this realization, but in order to avoid frightening her, he followed her lead. They both agree that he's been terrific, she says. After doing the arithmetic, he began to believe something was amiss, and he began to question if his brother had also done the same. Spectra is aware that her ex-boyfriend, he responds to her question about whether or not fate is harsh enough to make Adam the father, by saying that fate can have an intriguing sense of comedy. He's been here before, several times. It's time for them to fasten their seatbelts and go where the ride takes them. Nick tells Sally he's not upset by all of it after he gets dressed. Whatever happens, it won't alter his feelings for her. Sally believes that life is chaotic and unreliable. Nick says it's typical, and that she should just take care of herself and relax. She anticipates falling asleep as soon as she settles in, not telling him was killing her. After kissing her, he asked, better? She answers, much. She's debating whether Nick encourages her to choose her own path, but suggests she let him know her intentions as soon as possible. It's not about him, but about her being able to carry a lighter load. Sally also thinks it's time to get to the bottom of things. Ultimately, she says to herself, I will have a paternity test done and acquire the answers we need. Sally calls to schedule a paternity test after Nick has left. At Crimson Lights, Tucker encounters Adam. McCall can't decide what to eat and is feeling stressed up over the options. He offers to buy Adam a cup of coffee and a brownie, and the two of them engage in light conversation. They sit down and laugh about being the bad guys of Geno City, while Tucker shares some advice for men who live on their own. This he keeps failing at becoming the man he believes he ought to be. As Adam observes, Ashley's departure was very unexpected. Tucker claims his emotions were genuine, but he lost a lot of ground due to his conceitedness. He tells Adam that he has no right to pass judgment on him and that he should feel comfortable opening out to him. Adam freely acknowledges that he has lost someone dear to him and that they are now with a relative, just like putting battery acid on a cut. Tucker reassures him that people are adaptable and that there is always reason to have faith. As a lamp to the path, both then and now, Tucker is about to leave when Nick gets there. He then leaves after making a joke about him. Adam thanks his lucky stars that he bumped into his brother and informs him of his role in alerting Jack to the scheme hatched by Kyle and Victor to destroy him. Even though Nick's motives for telling him were purely selfish, he is grateful for the heads up. Asking, what's up with Sally? This time it's Adam who is inquiring. His sibling assures him that he should not fret over the matter. Just being around them makes her feel awkward, and he has no idea if or when that will change. Lily, who is working at Chancellor Winters, uses video chat to update Jill on the issue with Devon. For Jill, seeing Devon be so self-absorbed must be excruciating. What matters most is how he feels, not the several contracts he signed. Even if she disagrees with his decision, Lily can see why he wants to back out of the merger. She feels terrible about failing to keep her family united within the business. She is discouraged by her perceived lack of success. Jill has been there herself, and she explains why she has been so unsuccessful in the past. She picked herself up, though, and is now cheering on Lily as she takes the helm of the company with her characteristic vigor and resolve. She will be able to take charge without any obstacles in her way. Lily is concerned that worrying about Devon is still necessary, but Jill is sure that he has nothing to worry about. The request he is making has no basis in law. There's really just one conclusion that can be drawn from here. She understands that Lily does not wish to fight her brother and offers to do so on her own if that becomes necessary. Lily isn't changing her mind and doesn't think they should end a professional relationship. She's dead set on pushing Omega Sphere forward. She thinks it will be beneficial for the business and is counting on Jill's approval tonight. At society, Daniel unexpectedly meets Devon and ends up chatting with him at the bar. He explains that the fate of the gaming platform he's used for his whole life is uncertain. It's clear to Devon that he blames him for what happened. It has been confirmed by Daniel. Devon acknowledges he is partially too responsible, but acknowledges the situation is intricate. If Chancellor is unable to implement Omega Sphere, 
he is confident that someone else will seize the opportunity. Daniel returned because he was interested in rejoining the staff. Divin is certain that he intended to only collaborate with Lily, because of their long history, such is to be expected. Once things settle down, he's confident they'll be able to go forward. Daniel can't understand why he's causing his sister pain by telling her about the problems at work. Despite Devin's protests, Daniel sees no problem with him breaking his sister's heart. Devin maintains he has long felt uneasy about sharing his story publicly. His differences with Lily revolve around their divergent views on the company's future. In spite of the fact that they were able to put their differences aside in the past, Daniel notes that this is no guarantee that they will be able to do so in the future. When Lily finally shows up, she stands quietly in the background to listen to Daniel gush about what a genius she is. This time, she can't take it any longer and interrupts. Devin makes it evident that he shares his brother's high regard for his sister's intellect. Why doesn't she just quit her job at Chancellor Winters and join her brother at the family business if she really wants to run it? She believes he is putting her devotion to the test, but he responds that her accusations merely show her to be more dedicated to her career than her loved ones. After he leaves, Lily attempts to act as if nothing is wrong. Daniel feels terrible that she has to go through this and hopes he didn't go too far. With a bright grin on her face, she relates how she and Jill discussed Omega Sphere, with Jill ultimately deciding to proceed with the project. Everything he's asked for, she's ready to provide. He reaches for a hug since he can't think of anything else to say. The two friends, Mariah and Tessa, take a stroll across the park while cracking corny jokes. They express disbelief at the realization that they would soon be mothers. Everyone speculates on what a lucky and imaginative dreamer she will turn out to be. Tessa is confident that she will make a positive impact on their lives. The two of them gaze up at the night sky. They sit down and go over the baby checklist to ensure they have everything. Maria delegated responsibility to her meticulous wife for this reason. Tessa feels they should address one other by name. All of a sudden, it's like it's happening for real. Maria has already declared that there are no wrong responses before they even begin. Hyacinth is her first choice. Anushka, Tessa remarks, making her wife chuckle. They all concur that it ought to be original in a way that will stick with people for a long time. Through constant back and forth, they get plenty of practice using a variety of aliases. Maria gets emotional just picturing themselves holding their new baby. She suggests they wait till they meet her to choose a name. Tessa's wife reassures her that her fear is natural by putting her arm around her. Tessa begins to doze off, and they argue over who will have to enforce rules. Mom life, according to Tessa, will be cool. In labor, Delphine phones to let us know. They spring to their feet and say they'll get there as soon as they can. They begin giggling and kissing while jumping around. 